British Columbia is Canada's fastest urbanizing province. 85% of us live in urban areas. British Columbia wrestles with growth because we know what can happen when it is unrestricted and unguided. Experiences with sprawling cities and the threats these pose to our quality of life have encouraged us to think differently about how to address growth. With growth comes change. Our population is getting older. In 10 years, the largest cohort of people will be over 60. The character of our communities is threatened as big box stores on the edges of towns begin to replace vibrant downtowns and main streets. We are experiencing new residential patterns as people retire, incomes grow, and housing prices rise. All these patterns bring increased pressure on green spaces. Cities, towns, and rural areas can either work together to manage growth or can go it alone and leave the future up to chance. In 1996, British Columbia introduced legislation that would provide a framework for addressing our growth challenges. This program presents the reasons for the introduction of the Regional Growth Strategies legislation and the lessons learned from the first 10 years of implementation. We have had about 45 years of essentially automobile-oriented development, and in most parts of the province that had been at quite low density. Ten years ago, the average single-family lot size was uh, la generally larger than 50 by 100. When you talk about sewer or water providing the basic services to growth, if it's done in an unplanned way, then your, your costs are out of control. People were beginning to recognize that we have air quality problems in the Lower Mainland and that we need to, needed to work together on those and those again were a product of where people live, where they work, how they travel from one place to another. So you have to balance out the number of people that are living here with jobs for folks. You can't simply believe that everybody's going to, you know, in our case, work in the GBRD and live in the Fraser Valley. It's simply unworkable as a solution. Our ecological footprint, uh, our overconsumption uh, needs to be addressed in a meaningful way. It means looking at highway capacities, it means overall development and growth, uh, the pace of growth. And if we're going to continue to grow, how do we mitigate that growth so that as responsible stewards and citizens of the planet, our impact is mitigated. There are 28 regional districts in the province. Six of them have developed a regional growth strategy. Four others are developing or contemplating the development of their own regional growth strategy. In the late 80s and into the 90s, BC was the fastest growing province in Canada. And there was good planning going on at a municipal level, but there wasn't a way to link those plans to get the big picture of what's happening in our major urban regions. The GVRD had been doing a consensus-based regional planning process, and they were making good progress over a number of years in that way. But when it came down to the tough issues, they had to admit to us uh, that uh, consensus-based planning, a purely consensus-based planning system, can only go so far. You had to get closure, and they weren't able to get closure, or at least in a binding way, from their, their local governments. So we knew we had to uh, build on consensus-based planning, but we, we had to get closure. The regional growth strategies process in British Columbia is unique. The traditional regional planning system is uh, what we call the hierarchy. and um, whereas growth strategies assumes that all parties are equals. We were trying not to be prescriptive in legislation because we knew that the legislation had to fit a whole bunch of circumstances throughout the province. And what the growth strategies legislation enabled was for municipalities to plan on a regional scale. Fundamentally, the process is based on collaboration. One of the, the things that the legislation did was it said to municipalities, look, it's not an all or nothing thing. You can buy into 90% of the growth management strategy, or 85%, or 99%. And if you don't buy into one part of it, then you can go into a uh, dispute resolution mechanism just on that part. And, you, and we'll provide the mechanisms for facilitation, mediation, ultimately uh, for arbitration, which will then become binding. Once the region has negotiated a context statement with each of the municipalities in the region, then the municipalities are compelled to adopt that context statement as part of their official community plan. And at that point in time, uh, the legislation kicks in and says, once you have a regional context statement in your official community plan, that context statement and the rest of your official community plan has to be consistent. Most importantly, the collaborative vision of regional growth management is forward-looking. 
the regional growth strategies legislation does not just manage what we have today, but looks instead at trends and the needs of future generations. The system that we have in terms of arriving at that plan forces compromise. That kind of balanced approach where they're all at the table and they're all negotiating, so I think provides a, a, a much more healthy system. In theory, this means that the plan will end up having much stronger buy-in from all those partners involved in and affected by the process. The process enabled the individual communities to retain both their uniqueness but to commit to a regional vision. At the local level, we had appointed a citizens committee that was going to guide the planning process, gave them the resources, consultants, and they brought different groups together to talk about planning in our community. We took that approach and applied it at a regional level. Because there's such a large sort of ownership, because there's so many people involved, um, it's, it's something that people really trust. It's a challenging thing to do, but it's really important that you engage all of the elected officials because at the end of the day, you needed the support of each individual municipal council. While the regional growth strategies process has a number of strengths, it is also prone to specific challenges. The relationships that produce the plans have to be maintained, so there has to be effort put into uh, making sure that the plans are working and can be adjusted and updated the regional growth strategies process was designed to be flexible. However, in reality, where there is flexibility, there is also tension and challenge. In the capital regional district, there is an urban containment boundary, but each municipality was allowed to set its own urban containment boundary. There's always been, you know, there had, have, has had to be fairly significant amounts of compromise in order to get to agreement. Although the process itself can be demanding, and poses enormous challenges. If it is done well, the result can be a shared vision and a sense of direction for the region. It was not an easy process, but in the end, it was successful. One excellent outcome of all the regional growth strategies are urban containment boundaries. what I would call compact, complete communities. Creating more vibrant, built places rather than neighborhoods where there's only one use. built a plan and involved many, many people in it, they're not battling that plan because now they see the value in it. To get people to commit to a set of principles on, on what your community should be like, the plan follows those principles, then you don't have uh, the anxiety uh, in the communities. The regional growth strategy process has allowed us to start talking about these issues. It provides a venue and a forum in an ongoing way for regional districts to deal with regional issues. Threats from within regions continue to pose challenges to regional growth management. Pressures such as housing affordability, population growth and change, environmental and fiscal sustainability are all increasing. British Columbia's regional growth strategies processes have an important role to play in addressing these and other forces that threaten the quality of life of our citizens and the sustainability of our province as a whole.